Well, here's a pair of theorems we can explain with one picture. Um, just look over here, the red side, bigger than the blue side, so the red angle is bigger than the blue angle. So again, you can see right there, as that red side gets bigger, so does the red angle. Blue side gets bigger, the blue angle gets bigger. Makes sense. And the other theorem is simply the converse. Say, so, okay, the red angle gets bigger, the red side gets bigger. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just like you learned back in elementary school, the alligator opens his mouth to the bigger side. Whatever that means. There you go. Bigger angle, bigger opposite side. Bigger opposite side, bigger angle. Two theorems. Well, here's a chance to use theorems 5, 10, 5, 11. But first, why was 6 scared of 7? And then, oh, 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 yeah, because 7, 8, 9. Ah, oh, dying to say that. Finally, they get grouped together. Well, let's solve some of these. We've got this diagram right here. And again, we're going to order them. This is diagram for number 7. And we can see that the measure of angle Z is the Hmm is the smallest because it's 32. Well, the smallest angle is opposite the smallest side. Very straightforward. The next, the second angle, 36 degrees, angle X, is opposite, call it the middle side. Largest angle, opposite, largest side. Pretty straightforward. And again, because you're ordering them, in this case, from least to greatest, how about this one? Hmm. And again, we're going from least to greatest. Well, RT is the smallest side at 6. The angle opposite that is, of course, S. So the measure of angle S will be the smallest. Then the next in order, ST has a measure of 9. So angle R will be opposite that. And finally, the largest side is RS, which is 10. That's opposite angle T. Should be getting the hang of this by now. One more. Okay. Uh, KL. Well, we don't even need to look up here. We can see right here, this is 13. That's the shortest side opposite the smallest angle. The next would be 25, and that's going to be opposite angle K. And then finally, the longest side here, the 28, opposite the largest angle. It's that easy. Well, in keeping with our 789 theme, we have to decide what are, or what is a feasible length for this green segment. You might be tempted to go for that, but look more carefully. We do have two measures right here, and third angle theorem tells us we can find the third. Ah, well, once I know them, I've got the order now, because 56 would be the smallest of the three angles. So eight would be the smallest side, which eliminates these two possibilities. The only choice could be C. After all, that would be the order of the sides. So both of them, the red and the green side alike, have to be greater than 8. Well, here's a couple interesting inequalities for us. The measure of exterior angle 1 is greater than the measure of remote interior angle A. It's also greater than remote interior angle B. Now, it seems pretty trivial to me because we proved back in 4.2 that it's exactly equal to, this exterior angle is equal to the sum of the measures of the remote interior angles. So given that they can't be as small as zero, then these inequalities stand to reason. Oh, I love these error analysis, 28, 29. Well, right here, let's start with 28 first. I've got these two angles congruent, but I've got this triangle here. Well, that looks not good because of this. These angles are congruent. I would do this because those lines would have to be parallel. 
because these are corresponding angles and DF would be a transversal. So they couldn't possibly meet in a plane. All right, so much for 28. Let's look at 29. This seemingly innocent exercise, well, hang on, 59, 59, vertical angles. Now, the problem here, you've got to think about this a little bit. 59, that leaves 121 degrees to split over these two angles. I don't know how it's split, but no matter how you do it, there's no way this can be the largest of the three angles. And here it is, opposite the largest side. So no can do. I mean, if this was anything over 60, we could see it possible. But this just not possible. Well, in case you've ever wondered, why is the hypotenuse the longest side in a right triangle? Theorem 511 tells us right there. This angle's 90. There's only 90 degrees left to spread between these two. So these two have to be acute by definition. So, largest angle, opposite, largest side. A great exercise to close with. You might say it's a really humdinger. I've got this triangle, absolutely arbitrary triangle. I want to find the restrictions on x. It's funny because it looks like x could be anything. But let's remember, any two of these sides have to add up to more than a third. So let's get right to it. I'm going to say, well, what about the first case? I'm going to check that the green and the red add up to more than the blue. All right. Well, we could do this. Do a little bit of, oh, what's going on here? Ah, sorry about that. Do a little bit of algebra, combining the x's and uh, the constants in the second line. And then over here, oh, let's see, subtracting the three. Uh, oh, you can do algebra. Finishing it off, I've got x is less than 15. Or as it shows here, 15 is greater than x. Okay, that's one case, one of the three cases. Let's go to case number two. Uh-huh. I'm going to say that the blue and the red must also add up to more than green. Okay, and there's our first line, combining terms on the left. And let's see if we can simplify that. And when I divide by the coefficient 6, I've got x is greater than 10 6 or 5 thirds, or 1 and 2 thirds. But I'm just going to leave it at 5 thirds for now. We all like fractions. So we've got two cases, and let's finish with our third case, and that is the green and blue must be greater than the red. And here we or here we have the left side, the two terms combined, and a little bit of hocus pocus arithmetic. Oh yeah, I'm subtracting the two x and ah, four x is greater than eight, x is greater than two. Now we have to put the three of these together. I've got a restriction here for x being less than 15. I've got a restriction here that it is greater than two. And then I've got a third restriction x is greater than 5 thirds. Now 5 thirds is less than 2. So when I analyze this, I put this all together, I'm going to write it this way. See, this satisfies this inequality. It satisfies this inequality. And it also satisfies this inequality. Because after all, if it's greater than 2, it's greater than 5 thirds. It would have been a mistake if I had put the 5 thirds here. See, because then it wouldn't be satisfying this one. So there you go. You just had to realize where your limits were. This one is unnecessary. It's, you might say it's superseded by this limit. These two limits together give you this.